Hello, I'm Alan Rigel, Senior Academic Advisor with the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering. Uh, I'm Perry Karras. I'm a senior currently in chemical engineering. And we appreciate your time and your interest in the school and learning a little bit more about what we have to say about curriculum, jobs, opportunities, and other things that students do within the school. To begin, to give a little idea of the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering, we are in the middle of the road of all of the disciplines with uh, 561 total students. Uh, one of the things that we do pride ourselves is we have one of the more balanced percentages of men and women in our student population, which allows for great diversity among our genders uh, as far as studying, opportunities um, of things that they are able to do with uh, the academic side. Uh, we do see our students coming from all over the world, um, with 33% of the students coming from the state of Indiana, and 58% are non-resident from the rest of the United States. 95% uh, of our students are extremely active in experiential learning. This involves research, internships, co-ops, and other opportunities outside of the classrooms and laboratories. 75% uh, of our students uh, maintain a 3.2 GPA or higher. Uh, the reason we utilize this as a mark is because of the preference of when you T2M into a program with that 3.2. As you can see, over 80% of our students maintain a 3.0 or higher GPA. Our undergraduate program is ranked number 14 nationally, so something that we take a lot of pride with uh, because of our academics and our students and their involvements. The curriculum is important to just kind of get a, a little view of what it entails. Uh, because of chemical engineering, many students are in the belief that you must be strong and in, uh, have a lot of chemistry background. While there is some chemistry background, uh, and that is important, you will see that it is still a small portion of the curriculum within the major as well as our STEM core. While you are expected to have the general chemistries, and then go through organic chemistry and lab one, as well as organic chemistry lab two, uh, and physical chemistry. These are feeds into other uh, courses, more so like our chemical reactions or our momentum transfer, which we often refer to as fluids and heat and mass. The reason why also listing these particular courses is that these are what we refer to as fundamental labs. This makes us extremely unique across the United States uh, um, in comparison to other programs. These are labs that um, are supported and funded by industry, so they do give an idea of what you will encounter through your internships, jobs, and other opportunities. The other uh, aspect that is a little bit more unique to Purdue University and our school is uh, the Chemical Engineering 320 Statistical Modeling. We are one of the only programs where students have a statistic course that is attributed to chemical engineering specifically. So something to highlight that does give you a little bit of a uniqueness. Chemical Engineering 205, the Chemical Engineering Calculations course is highlighted primarily because when you come in, you are expected to have a C or better grade in this course in order to be considered passing to move on to the next courses in the sequence. We do want to get into a little bit of opportunities outside of the curriculum with how do you enhance your chemical engineering degree. All right, so study abroad is something that, you know, people coming in and freshmen and even seniors in high school are often thinking about whether they'd like to do it or not. Uh, it, when they're going to college, and a lot of people will pick programs and colleges based on whether they'll be able to do study abroad. So we're happy to tell you that you are indeed able to do study abroad within our program. We do offer our major courses over study abroad. For example, I know a multitude of people, one of which went to London, another went to Germany in their second semester of junior year, where they were able to take the heat and mass class, as well as our reactions class, which are two of our biggest courses abroad rather than having to stay here and going to study abroad on some less important courses. Uh, now, of course, there are a lot of study abroad programs at Purdue. So if you'd rather take all your major classes here and do study abroad in a smaller term, like a Maymester, 
there is the opportunity for that as well, though those likely will not count for chemi major courses. Uh, as well, there are lists online you can find of all the different areas in the world that you can go. Uh, those flags on the bottom you can see are going to be just a sampling of some of them, but whichever language you'd like to be, whichever culture you'd like to be near, there are a lot of options for actually taking our major courses abroad. However, I will add that if this is something you're interested in, you would likely need to begin thinking about this in your freshman year, or at the very latest, at the beginning of your sophomore year when you're entering Chemi. Uh, in order to lay out your program so that you'll be able to complete all of your major courses, it's important that the ball gets rolling on this early so that it's not last minute and maybe some credits don't transfer, maybe you have some issues if you do go abroad. So it's always a good idea, if you are interested in this, to get started with this early. Now, Geary is a program uh, I'm not personally involved with, but I know many people who are, and they essentially prepare you to go study abroad in your junior year from freshman year. I do believe you take a language with that, class, uh, with that program, uh, and overall, that kind of makes, if you're interested in it, that will make your transition into going to study abroad a lot smoother than if it was tacked on a little bit later. As Perry was mentioning with the study abroad programs, a lot of that is focused on the fall and spring term programs, so a semester long. There are a number of opportunities to go for summer, spring break, and May master, so these are often referred to as short term. Uh, particularly with spring break, there's always one that goes through the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering, uh, focuses on pharmaceutical manufacturing, going to Ireland, as well as other opportunities. Um, these are faculty led and are small groups of maybe 20 students that go. So there is not yourself going to experience it on your own. And it may be 10 to 14 days, depending on when that trip is going. Um, and it could be for one, two, three credits for that one spring break or short summer uh, opportunity. There are some other longer summer opportunities where students may go uh, to Spain uh, to actually do some research, and those credits can be attributed differently as well. So there are numerous opportunities. We also really encourage students that if chemical engineering uh, is not offering a program that you wish to go to or a country of the destination, there are numerous opportunities to continue uh, looking across the campus, and we encourage you to uh, take advantage of those so that you get some kind of experience abroad, which is looked upon highly by recruiters of companies because it does show your worldwide experience. So research is also going to be a really major component of student involvement in Chemi, as well as something that's great to get hands-on learning for yourself and put on your resume. So, as mentioned previously, about 75% of students get experiential learning. Now, not all of that is going to be research, but research is going to be a major, major part of it. It's very easy to get involved with research. Uh, there's a link on there right at the top right that will lead you to the website where you can check out Purdue, Purdue Davidson School of Chemical Engineering research topics, which professors are looking for students and what those projects are. Uh, essentially, all you're going to have to do to get involved is email a professor. You can actually do it as soon as freshman year. In my lab that I've worked in for the past couple years, uh, we've had kind of every year a freshman who thinks they're going to be in chemi. Uh, we even had a freshman who didn't end up going in chemi who still was working in our chemi lab. So you do not actually need to be in the program yet to participate in research in chemical engineering. Now, as far as what you can do in research, it's gonna depend highly on the project that you're working on. In my personal project I, that I've been on for a couple years, as I've mentioned, I've transitioned from initially just running components of experiments to now that I've been in there for a while and really know what's going on. I design a lot of our experiments. I train new members. Uh, I kind of do a little outreach to get new members. So there's a lot that you can expand in your role there that are gonna be applicable uh, skills for a job. Or if you're going into grad school, academia, it's gonna be even more applicable than it would be to a job generally. So there's lots and lots of topics that you can do research in. Those are kind of listed there as far as you know, polymers and fluids all the way to computer simulation. Those are gonna be a lot of reaction chemistry, but done through computers. 
Uh, personally, I work with biodiesel. So a lot of this research in general is going to be focused on sustainable processes, uh, environmentally friendly processes. And so my project has been taking the used coffee grounds from Vienna and Starbucks and other coffee shops nearby, and we investigate ways to produce biodiesel from them, i.e., how long should we react to the coffee grounds for? What should we use as a solvent? What catalysts might work? Uh, what yields might, might we be looking at and how can we increase those and moderate those to what we'd like, as well as doing analysis to see whether we're getting the right kinds of products. So you can, and I know a lot of people who do this, stay with the same research and go for years like I have, but there's also a lot of opportunities to hop around between research. If you join a lab and it's really not your thing after a semester or two, you can just as well go join another lab, see if that aligns a lot more with your interests and kind of the skills that you want to develop. As I mentioned earlier, anything you're doing in this lab is going to be a lot of personal development for you, especially if you haven't had this kind of experience before. When you're going into a job, any of that organization you've been learning in your research lab, any of that design experiment, uh, how you analyze things and how you choose to pre present things in reports and presentations will all be ap applicable in an industry setting as well as if you're going on further into ac academia. As well, if you're going further into academia, research is essentially a must-have. So whether you know if you're going to do academia or not, it's always valuable to start research as soon as you can just to see if maybe it's something you like and it changes your mind and you decide to go to academia. Or maybe you just pick up some skills and you have some fun researching something that's interesting and there's a lot of room for development. Personally, I will not be going into academia, but I've stayed with this lab for a couple years uh, and I really enjoy it. It's a great time. I've developed a great uh, relationship with my professor that I work with and it's led to a lot of connections and skills that I've developed that have gotten me to where I'll be going next year. As Perry alluded to, with research, uh, academically, uh, it is encouraged. Uh, we have about 35% of our student population that has done research at some point in the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering. But it's not limited to just our school, even though we have numerous opportunities because of our 45 plus faculty, uh, a large percentage of them work with undergraduates in these groups and are highly encouraged to do so. Uh, but we do have students that have gone through other departments or schools on campus, such as the College of Pharmacy, maybe the School of uh, Electrical Engineering, uh, Nuclear Engineering, Department of Chemistry, and have taken their chemical engineering processes and other ideas and have merged the two opportunities together to uh, experience another area and other faculty across campus. So it is not just limited to what you do in our program. Um, credits are something that our students will do for the research. Um, credits is affiliated with how many hours per week are you putting into the lab, and that is determined uh, with you and your faculty member. Uh, on the curriculum, you may earn up to six total credits of chemical engineering research and have that apply to different areas on your chemical engineering major with the selective as well as in the engineering selective um, and have the application that way. Again, this is something that all students should really consider. Utilize our website to look at the different research areas if you have an idea of what you'd like to look at, as well as a listing of all of our faculty and the projects that they're currently working on. So that might help you pinpoint who you would like to reach out to. Um, so please do that. And it is uh, something that really enhances your understanding of what you're learning in the classroom and putting that into something more applicable and experiential, and then taking that also into your classroom when you're hearing about theories and other fundamentals uh, of knowing this is what I have gone through. So a little bit about the cooperative program and internships. Um, in our particular school, uh, Dr. Gabriela Naj is the Director of Industrial Education and she leads a lot of co-op callouts so that students can learn about the program itself 
uh, get connected with some of the uh, companies of those that you see on the screen that participate in co-ops. A co-op is something that's actually run through the Office of Professional Practice. Um, and these are opportunities where you may be hired by a company, even as a second semester, freshman year in engineering, uh, to then work three or five rotational uh, work opportunities. Um, and while it does extend when you would actually graduate, the extension is based on work experience and going into the industry and hopefully alternating and flip-flopping, if you will, an academic semester as well as a semester while working as well as in summers. This is a great opportunity. Uh, sometimes uh, people have an easier time, if you will, in finding an opportunity to work in the co-op program versus an internship, which would be a one-off summer. Uh, because those can be extremely competitive as everyone's looking to just work during a summer. But with a co-op, a company is willing to take someone who's a little bit more green behind the ears, if you will, um, that doesn't have a lot of experience maybe in chemical engineering academics, but know that you're going to grow with the company and they're going to be able to teach you their processes and bringing you through different projects and you being able to grow with that company and their opportunities throughout time. Um, again, internships, we do see mostly students finding a summer internship, but it's becoming a little bit more popular where you may work for a summer and a fall or a spring semester and a summer. And then we have had some that have worked one year in total. Uh, so a summer, fall, spring with one company and then come back and return uh, to the academics. The nice thing about internships, not only is the experience and the resume building and even being paid to learn, um, but it's the networking that you're going to receive. And it's the ability to start applying the knowledge and material that you're gaining in your classroom and putting that into an industrial uh, setting um, and then bringing those experiences to then better understanding maybe what faculty are talking about in the classes because you will have been in that position before. And I'd like to add, whether you're a freshman that's looking at going into chemical engineering or if you're going into any engineering major, these are gonna be really valuable to you. So there's the industrial roundtable fair in the fall and there's the expo fair in the spring, both of which are gonna be very big opportunities to find an internship for the summer is generally going to be from IR, Industrial Roundtable, and a co-op, which is generally going to be from the Expo in the spring. At the School of Chemical Engineering here, we do have some resume tips and some interview help that you can get. Uh, we have staff on hand uh, that you can contact and go in and have your resume reviewed. If you don't really have a resume, you can get help with building it. You can also get help with answering interview questions. Uh, figuring out what kind of questions you should ask in an interview, uh, as well as what kind of companies you should be looking for, given your specific interests. And personally, I've taken very great advantage of these. It's made a world of a difference in terms of my ability to interview, as well as the resume that I'm putting out there and how to tailor it to each company that I'm interested in. Uh, so again, internships, really look at these, start as soon as you can, and just try to learn about the process of getting one, what goes on at one, um, and how you can apply. And again, in preparation for Industrial Roundtable, which is usually around the third week or so of the fall semester, when you enter the, uh, the School of Chemical Engineering, you will be in a one credit seminar, which is Chemi 200, Chemical Engineering Sophomore Seminar. The first three weeks of this seminar, a lot of it is honed in on bringing those resources to you uh, to help you learn about building your resume, getting out to the Center for Career Opportunities, working with uh, Beverly Menser, who is uh, in our school specifically, uh, who will help with that and talk about building your resume. So the first couple of weeks are really dedicated to helping you as a new chemical engineering student be prepared for going into the industrial roundtable as it is such a large opportunity to get exposure to what kind of companies come here, what's the process like, doing an elevator pitch, having resumes on hand, 
So uh, we really try to help you in preparation at an early stage of your academic career. People who are looking at chemical engineering will kind of have some difficulty figuring out what it is a chemical engineer does exactly. Uh, you would think it would be chemistry. That's not always the case and not even usually the case. So we're going to run through a list of some of the industries and what a chemical engineer might do in those industries to give you a better idea of what you might actually be doing in the workforce or if you choose to go into an academic setting. So here are the main six, but this list is always expanding and this doesn't even encapsulate, I would say, about half of what chemical engineers will be doing. Uh, so I'm going to run through each of these individually, consumer products, petroleum, food and beverages, energy and environment, biotech with pharmaceuticals, and high performance materials. But a lot of the companies, as we mentioned, that you'll see at Industrial Roundtable when you're looking at internships will belong to these categories. So it's great to get an introduction of them and see what you might be doing with a company that works in any of them. So as far as consumer products go, these are, as in the name, products that are designed for the general consumer to buy at a store and use in their day to day life. These are not going to be chemical feedstocks. These are going to be end products. So one example right up there, there's a diaper. Uh, now, a lot of engineering actually goes into the formation of diapers and how they're made and their different properties that make them function, as well as different lotions and creams like you can see below and paint on the right. Now, you may not even think initially that a chemical engineer is actively involved with this, or you may think, okay, these already exist. What is a chemical engineer gonna do with these? As far as a chemical engineer goes, in a manufacturing process, i.e. the factory, the line where they're creating these, they're going to be optimizing the yields for each of these. So maybe you make a powder that goes into the diaper. You're going to optimize the production of that, make the possibility for more to be produced in a specific amount of time, uh, as well as removing impurities, making sure the product is completely up to standards and within code as far as the government and other company regulations may be concerned. As well, consumer products is a really interesting field because there's a lot of opportunities for research and development with chemical engineers here. Often, in a lot of the other fields we'll talk about, a person participating or a chemical engineer participating in research and development will have a doctorate. They'll have gone through a PhD program. In consumer products, there's a lot of opportunity to be involved in the research and development as even a fresh graduate from your bachelor's. Uh, and so Procter & Gamble is going to be one of the big companies that offers those opportunities uh, and that you'll see. It's a big name you'll see at Industrial Roundtable. But there's tons and tons of different companies. There's Sherwin-Williams for paint. Uh, Kimberly-Clark, as you can see, is that those diapers are from them, uh, as well as Lubrizol, which makes a whole lot of different products. Now, if you're interested in this field, uh, as I mentioned, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. This is a massive one of them. Uh, and whether you want to be involved on the manufacturing side or the research and development side, you're ultimately going to be helping make products that you know you will use. So you may make a new toothpaste and find next year, a couple years on, that you're actually using it in your own home. So I think personally that that's really cool. Now, Petroleum is the industry a lot of people will typically think of when chemical engineers come to mind. Historically, petroleum was one of the major fields that chemical engineering as a field was created for. Uh, but today, this industry is a little bit smaller than it used to be, uh, but still has a massive presence. And it is not just drilling oil, bringing it out of the ground, and those kind of dirty processes that people think of when you think of petroleum. In fact, pretty much anything that you use in your day to day comes from petroleum. Your clothes may be made of polyester. That comes from petroleum. Any plastic that you can see in your room currently made of petroleum. So chemical engineers are going to have an enormous amount of opportunities here in the petroleum industry. As I mentioned previously, a lot of roles are going to fall along the manufacturing side where you have a process, you're maintaining its operation, you're helping optimize it to make it run better. But also there's a lot of opportunities here to design new facilities, design new processes, and take part in the kind of transformation of the industry as it looks to go more green. 
So contrary to what m many people may believe, obviously petroleum is a generally dirty industry. If you're someone who's very environmentally inclined, if you're looking to tackle climate change, this is actually one of those industries that'll give you a great opportunity to do so. If you know, you're looking at trying to make the environment better, you'd want to go look at the companies that are doing it the dirtiest currently, as they're the ones that are looking to optimize. So contrary to kind of popular belief, there's really tons and tons of great opportunities here to make the world cleaner and try and optimize how we're running all of our processes in the world to make it more sustainable uh, with less impact on the environment. Food and beverage. This is gonna be kind of similar to consumer products. However, there's a big added constraint in that your products don't just have to sit on the shelf, they have to be edible, so you, can, you can't have many byproducts in them whatsoever. And also, there's a similarity in that research and development is not gatekept behind a PhD for this field, similarly to consumer products. So, as you can see on the left there, the packaging itself is going to be a big thing that chemical engineers do. Uh, the plastic formulation that's going to go into those, making sure that that packaging is effective, that it has a long shelf life, that it can keep everything there without plastic leaching into uh, your product, as well as the actual food. So engineer, engineers, chemical engineers, will help formulate new food, uh, change kind of what's being used to make it. Uh, they'll be involved in you know making it last longer making it more shelf stable um, as well as if you're lucky getting involved with making it taste good uh, there are some really interesting positions in this field where you can be something of a taste tester determining whether things are good what makes things taste good and what we might add to make things taste better this is going to kind of run in tandem with petroleum however unlike petroleum which includes all the production of plastics along with energy this is just gonna be energy. Now, as the world kind of moves forward, we've been talking about sustainability a bit, finding more renewable and sustainable energy is a huge concern, and it's a huge concern for chemical engineers who have the tool set and mindset to tackle problems involving that. So, hydrogen, wind power, solar panels, hydropower, and recycling to create more fuel and whatnot from what we already have rather than from uh, what we dig out of the ground is going to be big things that chemical engineers are working on. A multitude of projects fo focused on all of these fields. Uh, recycling, you can see in the bottom right, that's one of our researchers here, Dr. Wang. Her project is focused a lot on taking old plastic and making it back into fuel so you can kind of take this garbage that we would just throw out into the world, reclaim it, and use it as fuel, kind of removing a step where it goes to the environment as a plastic, and instead finding a more efficient way to use it. As I mentioned previously, my research kind of runs along a similar line of using coffee grounds, which are just going to be waste, and turning them into uh, fuel, biodiesel. However, as I mentioned, hydrogen is a big thing. Actually, the senior design project this year is to work on designing a hydrogen plant that is net zero, uh, produces no emissions that aren't captured, and runs on clean electricity. Hydrogen burns clean, it doesn't produce carbon, and so it's another big opportunity that's growing across many companies for chemical engineers to work on and kind of design the processes surrounding it. Solar panels are a mature technology, but could always use some improvement, uh, especially in the terms of the formulation. So chemical engineers will be involved in how they're laying the plastic down on there, how they're laying the uh, circuitry on the top of it, on top of a solar panel, as well as making them more stable in the elements uh, and figuring out how to actually increase their yield uh, in terms of energy. So chemical engineers, can be involved all over the green energy field and whether that's in the field of making petroleum more renewable and more sustainable or in the area of the new fuels that themselves do not cause emissions or recycling 
There is tons and tons of opportunity in research and de design, manufacturing, and the creation of facilities. Chemical engineers can slot in anywhere here. Now, biotechnology is going to be kind of running in parallel with pharmaceuticals. So, chemical engineers will be involved in this a lot more than you would imagine. Uh, you would think a biological engineer or someone you know, who studied biology as a PhD in school would be involved with this. They will be involved, but that'll be mostly in the formulation side. When they want to bring a project to scale, actually created in real life, a chemical engineer is going to design the reactor with all of its pipes, all the flow going through it, how much should be going through it, what temperature should it be, what pressure should it be, etc. Everything involved in that is going to be a chemical engineer. And so if you're not as interested in hard chemicals, uh, in, in organic chemicals, you can work with enzymes, you can work with bacteria, you can work with cells. Uh, and there's lots of opportunities for this, both in academia, which is going to be more on the cutting edge side, and in pharmaceuticals, which still uses a lot of cutting edge processes, but is a heavily regulated industry that still uh, employs chemical engineers in a bunch of parts of it, where a chemical engineer in pharmaceuticals may be doing less the drug discovery side and more the implementation, quality control, uh, ensuring that every design is as efficient as it can be. A lot of these things I've mentioned previously. You'll see they're kind of similar across some of these, though the field is different. Now, high performance materials is a bit of a catch all for everything. Uh, pretty much anything that performs highly, i.e., it stays together when you use it uh, and it endures a lot of use, is going to be a high performance material. The rubber on the bottom of your shoes. That's going to be high performance material. The parts that go into semiconductors, those are going to be high performance materials. This slide really doesn't quite capture how much fits into this category. And I can't really fully say exactly how many different industries a chemical engineer can fit into here because they're really limitless. It's anything where you're taking some reactant, some feed, something some raw material and producing something else that's going to see a lot of use, that's going to be a high performance material. And chemical engineers will be involved in research and design here. They'll be involved in the product design, which is, you know, making sure your project product meets specifications. They'll be involved in the plant design and implementation. They'll be design, uh, involved in maintaining facilities in upgrading them in optimizing them in running projects. They're going to be doing pretty much everything you could think of involved with these. And so a lot of the other topics, especially petroleum that I mentioned, will kind of coincide with this category. But high performance materials is a really vague description for pretty much everything. And that is to say a chemical engineer really can go into any industry as everybody takes something and makes something else. And that's what we do. Here we've got just some of the biggest hiring companies that we see for our new grads. A lot of these will likely be recognizable names. Lilly is a big pharmaceutical company based in Indianapolis. Uh, ExxonMobil, I'm sure pretty much everyone's heard of that. Uh, oil company based all over. Procter & Gamble, as I mentioned previously. All of these are really large companies that represent some of those uh, categories as we, we've been speaking about. Uh, and one thing that we like to point out is that chemies are well paid. So, Coming out as a fresh undergrad going into industry, you can expect an average starting salary near 82000 or more. Now, across all the schools at Purdue, uh, in the School of Engineering, in the College of Engineering, we rank number two. Uh, computer Engineering slash Electrical is one up. And then Computer Science, excluding the School of Engineering, is going to be number one of the whole school. However, those are very different fields than chemical engineers will be involved in. So if you're someone who likes a lot more hands-on processes, likes to be able to see physically a lot of what they're working with, and still wants to get paid well, uh, chemical engineering is a really great opportunity for you. It's a really great program we have, uh, and Purdue puts a lot of effort forth to make sure that you secure somewhere where you want to work and that you can work after college that will be worth it for you. With uh, the hiring companies, <clears throat> we are seeing uh, expansive industry that are looking at chemical engineers. 
notably in the automotive uh, industry, whether that means one of the big three, as well as the Teslas and other uh, more EV centric type of uh, of companies because of the chemical engineers that are needed within the process of how do we take out the material and utilize the material into uh, the batteries uh, that are essential uh, for charging and for running those types of, of vehicles, not only on with Teslas, but as Daimler Chrysler is moving more toward a, uh, the EV model for uh, semi, uh, semi trailers. So these are things that our students are going into uh, and certainly uh, very expansive on what uh, they're able to do. As far as uh, being able to kind of keep in touch with uh, the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering, uh, you can always follow our Instagram where we kind of use this to promote any um, lecture series that are coming on campus, uh, academic opportunities, as well as study abroad, uh, tutoring, things that will be helpful to our students to being successful students. Um, if you need to reach out to us, there's our email and our phone. And if you happen to be around Forney Hall, you can come to the undergraduate office uh, in room G041. And we would greatly um, appreciate to see you. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch our presentation and learn a little bit more about uh, the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering and what chemical engineers do. Again, I'm Alan Rigel, Senior Academic Advisor. Uh, and I'm Perry, Senior in Chemical Engineering. Great, and we appreciate your time and we wish you all the best in your future academic endeavors.